Ohio Chapter Induction Banquet. I want to thank everyone in attendance for their support of this outstanding banquet. Tonight's a very special night, or this afternoon is a very special afternoon. Uh, it's, about, it's all about the eight inductees we have here tonight. It's their night. I'd like to be the first to welcome and congratulate tonight's inductees. I hope tonight is one that they always remember. Tonight's inductees contributed to the sport of wrestling. The contributions of the sport of wrestling are groundbreaking, inspiring, and are so very special to our sport in the state of Ohio. This group has been nominated by their peers as, as elite in their profession. They have set new standards of excellence that other coaches and supporters of wrestling have to strive to, to achieve. Ohio's, Ohio has an amazing history in the sport of wrestling. The Ohio chapter has an obligation to honor and recognize these outstanding individuals. This is an obligation that we take very seriously. Join me in welcoming, in, uh, welcoming the 2022 National Wrestling Fall Hall of Fame Ohio chapter inductees. Um, I'd like to introduce our board members really quick, if they would stand. Uh, Gordy Longshaw. Uh, how about we do this? How about we, we hold the applause until after, after everyone's done? Gordy Longshaw, Robin Rayfield, Andy DeSabato, <laughs> Ray Anthony, Steve Kish, Dick Bonacci, who's not in attendance tonight, uh, Steph Mendelson, she's up in the doorway out there, and myself, Joel Greenland. Uh, we have a special guest tonight as well, Krista Gatt Graff. She's the state chapter's director for the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. We also have a, a, another very special group in attendance tonight, past inductees to the Ohio chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Um, when I call your name, if you could please stand up and then remain standing and everybody please hold your applause until the very end. Um, Anthony Campolo, Greg Erbis, Ray Anthony Sr., Christopher Kali, Steve Kish, Robin Rayfield, Chuck Angelo, Larry Deaton, Andy DeSabato, Eric Tokenen, Joel Greenland. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Steve Kish. They just put a little pressure on me. I was supposed to give the invocation. I'm now directed to let you folks know there will be a representative come to take your table next to uh, get your meal. I handled that well. <laughs> please, please, please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to welcome each and every one of our 2022 National Wrestling Hall of Fame Ohio chapter designees. Uh, thank you to each of their relatives, friends, and just wrestling fan, fan, fans in general. We appreciate you being here. Uh, we pray that you would bless our food, and also we pray that you would help us to have safe trips home from this event. In your name we ask this. Amen. Amen. This time, would you rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Flags over here. To I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go ahead and be seated. Everybody loses a key, but this is pretty easy to find. Is it anybody's key? Okay. Enjoy your dinner. Talk to you later. Thank you. Probably kisses, yeah. And you always say, if I affect one kid in the room, if one kid gets affected by this message, so uh, Bill McGrain, who's an inductee of this Hall of Fame, and deservedly so, was holding a clinic. He always did them in Olmstead Falls. He always had, you name it, Lincoln McElravey's in the world, to 
you know, all these different wrestlers. So that year it was Tom Brands coming off a 1995 World Championship and the 1996 World Medal. And Tom Brands sat there after a kid wasn't listening and told this story about how wrestling doesn't need you, but somebody in this room needs wrestling. And he sat there and told this story about somebody in this room needs the discipline that comes from this sport, needs the work ethic, needs the humility, needs to know who they are as a young man. And probably for the first time, I'd like to think when my wife first met me, it was love at first sight and the light switch went off. I think for the first time in my life, when I heard those words from Tom Brands, I thought he was speaking directly to me. And I'd like to tell you that you see some of the awards and accolades I've gotten, which there was a lot more, but my secretary over there, if you inductee day, Tom Evans didn't put them all up. <laughs> but I'd like to tell you that I knew I was going to do all the things I was capable of doing, but I didn't. And it was the people in the wrestling community along the way that helped me greatly. I wrestled for two of the inductees I'll be going in today. Coach Drago is one. I wrestled for him for a summer with Coach Hewitt and Coach Tokenin. And I wrestled for Tom Evans in high school. But along the way, this wrestling community has always been there to support me, help me. You know, nobody coaches wrestling for the money, I can tell you that. I can tell you Coach Greenlee does definitely does not coach wrestling for the money. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. But along the way, I always had somebody helping me, believing in me, pushing me, spending time with me. When I got into high school and they couldn't find partners for me, Tom Evans reached out to Chris Electis, reached out to Big Mike, Mike Kali, and said, would you like to bring Alex over and wrestle with Bobby Jones, who's defending state champ? Well, for the first hour, I thought, man, this ain't too bad. I'm a freshman, Bobby's returning state champ. I realized we were going about 65% because I didn't need a neck roll the rest of that season in football because he proceeded to put my testicles on the back of my neck the whole time I wrestled him the next hour. But when that was over, Big Mike had Bobby spend an hour with me on the track, talk to me, encourage me, pass down knowledge. Then my sophomore year, Tom Evans went into his own pocket like he always did and brought in Rex Holman, former national champion. And Rex spent time with us. And then we'd come down here to the Ohio State Wrestling Camp, where I got to meet some of the most interesting people in the world, the Nutter family. So if anybody knows the Nutters, they're definitely interesting. So I wrestled with Nick and Neil all the time. I was telling some of these guys at the table I was at some of the stories about me and Neil. We'll keep those for another time. <laughs> but along the way, continuously, this community has always been there. And I think this class of 2022, <clears throat> the men and women that are in this class come from all different backgrounds but I think the biggest thing they chose to do is make a difference in somebody's life. And it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take money. It doesn't take anything but your time and wanting to be there for somebody else. And of all the things I've done in my life, of all the things I've been a part of, this community is the strongest I've ever been around. My boys wrestle coming up, and they wrestle for Eric Burnett. And I tell people all the time, it's not that I want my boys to stay in this sport, to win. I want my boys to stay in this sport so they learn their max of who they can be as a young man. So they learn to push themselves. So they learn to be selfless for others. So they learn to be a good teammate. The physicality of this sport and the needing of a good team and a good community is what keeps this strong. And I don't think there's any better class. I've been to a couple of these. This is one of the best classes I think we've had going in a while because they're all from different areas. Some people coached and then went into the administrative side, <clears throat> ran tournaments, became the face of wrestling in the media before that became a thing. So I think you guys are in for a good night. I want to thank you guys for all coming. I hope you guys all drive safe. I hope you guys... Um, Get on Mr. Crozier who won the money because his plaque is the difference of the 50-50 he won. So if he wants his plaque, that's the cost to get his plaque just so he knows. But when you don't think in life sometimes you can make a difference. 
There's somebody out there that's listening. There's somebody out there that cares. And all it takes is being there for somebody. And so I'd like to thank you guys for coming today. And with that, we'll start with our first inductee. Our first inductee, Brian Brakeman, is, from, is a Parham, Ohio native. He earned a bachelor's degree from Case Tech. And then everybody will know why he started doing his famous report. Because after he graduated from Case Tech, he got an MBA and a PhD in statistics from Western Reserve. And for some of you young people in here, that's Case Western Reserve now up in Cleveland. In 1971, 72, he began publishing a wrestling forecast known as the Breakman Report, where he ranked every wrestler in every weight class and projected state champs in all divisions. Across 40 odd years, he had a 70% accuracy. And at one point, if my research from my secretary is correct, Mr. Breakman, that you correctly predicted 13 to 14 at one point. Before it was vogue to have podcasts and Facebook Live, Brian was working with WVIZ TV, so if you heard that sultry, sultry sweet voice in the middle of the night, I was watching wrestling, it was probably Mr. Brakeman. Along the way, the OSHA adopted many of Brian's recommendations, including the switching to a double elimination tournament. Brian also served as a, seat, as a chairman of the seating committee for the state dual tournament and was inducted into the Ohio Wrestling Hall of Fame in 1993. He was the first media and second non-coach wrestler to be so honored. And in doing some research on Mr. Brakeman, I think he'll be the first person inducted in the National Hall of Fame twice now today, because in 2017, he won the Bob Dellinger Award. The Bob Dellinger Award is uh, presented annually by Amateur Wrestling News to recognize the Wrestling Writer of the Year, and is the only media award listed in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present for induction the Ohio Chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Brian Brinkman. Well, to the best of my knowledge, I don't think my high school has ever planted a tree in my honor. But... There is a patch of grass and weeds back by the tennis court that I understand may be dedicated to me in the near future. <laughs> Let's be traditional here and at least begin with the thank yous. And I have a lot of them after 55 years, over 300 telecasts, over 4,000 pages of predictions. First, I'd like to thank the committee for this honor. It's been a wonderful afternoon here, and I really appreciate it, and I'm sure all the inductees will say the same thing. I would particularly like to thank Robin Rayfield, who was kind of my sponsor here in doing this. And if he hasn't told you already, he beat Dave Riggs for the state championship back in 19-whatever. <laughs> say that again. <laughs> I don't have to, you will. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank the coaches, and there's a lot of them here. A lot of what I did really depended on the goodwill and the help of the coaches. They sent me bracket sheets. They sent me letters. They answered my phone calls. And during tournaments, when they were very busy, they made sure that their finalists got to come over to the table and fill out the sheets for the, for the telecast. I'd also like to thank the wrestlers, because there can't be a treat after you win 8-7 to seven in overtime in a gym that's about 120 degrees, that I drag you over to the table to fill out this sheet. Sweat stripping all over. We used to have two or three of those sheets because they would ruin them on the first one. Couldn't grip a pencil because you'd grip the opposition so tough. And in the same place, I got to talk to a lot of the great wrestlers. I mean, Lee Camp and David Taylor and Logan Steber and a lot of people who may not have been quite at that level, but who were very fine wrestlers and who were really fun to talk to. I remember talking to one of the Illyria wrestlers who I made fun of, kind of. I said, I don't know whether you'll be able to to handle this particular sheet, but maybe your father can help. He says, well, I'll do my best. And then as he left, he says, you know, I'm going to Harvard. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the officials. I rarely do that uh, for two reasons. One is that I needed their help in terms of the, the actual logistics of telecasts, lining up their boys so they faced the camera, trying to stay out of the way. Usually we only had one camera working. And they did a great job. The other thing I enjoyed was that they had decisions that sometimes were controversial. 
It made for better television. You have Jeff Sindelar or Mike Gilmore as your color person. It makes a real difference when they can say, oh, geez, that official really goofed up. But as it turns out, in most cases, that wasn't the case. I'd also like to thank my two television stations, PBS, WVIC, which Alex mentioned, and Cable 9 in Macedonia, who I've worked with in the last 20 years. WVIC was really a pioneer in televising high school and uh, even some college sports. Mike Massa, who I know many of you remember, was really the lead person in doing that, and they did a wonderful job. And I, I give WVIC an awful lot of credit. Cable 9, much the same with Jeff Cole and Greg Bizjak. They do a great job in covering the wrestling as well. And I'd also like to thank my employer at the time, the East Ohio Gas Company. You know, you hear a lot of bad things about corporations, about the fact that they're only in it for the profit, that they're tough on their employees, that they don't listen to customers. And some of that is true. I can attest to that. But on the other hand, there's a lot of great people at East Ohio. And they were the ones that sponsored the sports telecasts, and particularly the rest of them. I estimated not that long ago that over the 30 years that they did it, in present day dollars, they spent about $1.3 million covering wrestling. All of that, by the way, was shareholder dollars. None of it was rate payer, which means it all came off the bottom line right at the beginning. Now, at my table, I had a picture. This is the 1958 state champions from Ohio. There were only 10 weight classes then, by the way. It was the first state tournament I ever went to. It was at Lakewood, and that's the only reason I went. It was near my home. And also because one of our wrestlers, little Jimmy Lynx, as it turned out, was a state champion. Parma's first, and one of only three that we had. And while I was there, by the way, he won both of his matches on referee's decisions. Hmm. It uh, not happened very often. In those days, it was different with the referee's decisions. There wasn't much criteria involved. And uh, he beat Ernie Crean from Maple Heights in the finals. And Ernie Crean, I saw decades later, his, uh, his grandson was Ty Mitch, who was a three-time state champ. And I introduced myself, he kind of knew who I was, and I mentioned that I was at that tournament. He said, my God. He said, did you see what they did to me? He said, I deserve that decision. I mean, there was real passion here. He said, I thought about it every day of my life since then. And I think you see that very often with wrestling. The other thing that I thought about there was there were so many different ways to win a wrestling match. It wasn't one particular way you could win all kinds of different ways and it intrigued me. I'm big on analytics as you obviously know and I thought to myself maybe there's something here that you could really analyze like I was trying to do with baseball. So the next year, the next couple of years I worked as a scorer for the team and at the same time I made kind of a devil's bargain. I along with Harry Hill talked Harry Huska, who's a member of this group, to come out for wrestling. The bargain was that he would come out and I would do his homework. <laughs> a bargain which he demanded <laughs> fairly frequently. It was also the bargain that I'm sure has ensured that I will never get into heaven uh, based on the fact of the number of people that uh, he defeated. Anyway, I through all the college years, as Alex mentioned. And when I got into graduate school, I thought what I might do is use wrestling for my dissertation. Kind of an analytical thing like you see now in baseball all the time. So I started collecting a lot of information, things that I thought I might be able to utilize. Talking about strategies and tactics, the best things to do. At the same time, I happened to listen to Mike Massa do his first few WVIZ wrestling telecasts. Mike was struggling. Uh, he was a very busy man. He was a principal in the Cleveland Metropolitan School District, which was a big job in and of itself. He was also on some district boards and state boards. And also at home, he and his wife had 10 girls. So, so Mike, uh, Mike doesn't have a lot of time to come up with information. So I wrote him a letter and said, you know what? I'd be glad to go early in the tournament and collect some stuff for you. Never heard from him. And then a day or two before a district, uh, sectional at Mayfield, he said, well, why don't you come out and help me? I, I really need the help. So I went out there, and Ed Ferris was directing that tournament, and he helped me a little bit too, and we got some information ready for Mike. 
when he got there, he looked all this. He said, I can't do all this. He goes, why don't you come on the air? You can be the, the, the color person. And that's how it started. First of 300. Mike was, Mike was really an innovator, too. It's a shame that, that uh, he died quite so young. And, by the way, with regard to collecting all this information for the PhD, I, I don't want to correct Alex exactly, but well, I never did get the, the actual PhD. I did the coursework, all right. But I had, I had sons who uh, were born at that time, one of them back in the room back there, twins, and so I needed to get a, a little bit better job. But what I did do for television was collect a lot of information, probably more than I needed to. And as time went on, I was so perfectly situated. I mean, East Ohio serves northeastern half of Ohio, and they got newspapers from all the counties. I was a block away from the Cleveland Metropolitan Library, which is a great library. And I got to know a lot of the coaches, and as I mentioned, they were a great help. Those bracket sheets are gold for me. I think that the other part that was sort of important there was that there was an opportunity there. Wrestling didn't get a lot of coverage in the newspapers, and especially on any kind of a statewide basis. So I thought I'd write the report. And I would do that basically for two reasons, to recognize people who were particularly good and to help fans, our, our, our audience, in terms of thinking more about the state tournament and being more involved in it when they know they're wrestling a kid that maybe is one of the best in the state. And so I did that for 42 years. At this point in time, my wife finally talked me into to, uh, retiring from that. And she's been a my whole family has been wonderful in helping me, and there's a thank you that I don't want to forget. She's actually here, though, not to see, see me speech. There's 62 transfer boxes in our basement full of wrestling stuff. She's hoping one of you, or maybe several of you, make some kind of a, a, a place for me to where I can store it all, because there's a lot of it. Right. One thing I, uh, I wanted to mention is that I haven't had a great wrestling career. I'd be the first to admit I did get a trophy in the 11th grade uh, for my gym class. I finished second, not silver. But I did, have, I, I did want to mention my one great wrestling championship. Back in the mid-80s, Howard Ferguson, who was a good friend of mine, got me together with Pat Galbincia, who was in the, this Hall of Fame, and who was the play, writer for 30-some years for The Plain Dealer. He says, you know what, you guys talk a lot about wrestling, but you know what, we haven't seen you wrestle. He says, here's what I'm going to offer you. I'm going to offer you a thousand bucks. He said, to wrestle off at halftime in one of our dual meets. Galbincia looks at him and says, Howard, how does that affect my amateur status? <laughs> Howard said, it's okay, Pat. There's no problem. So, he was going to get Dick Bonacci to help coach him. And I was going to get Harry Huska. I figured at least I'd be able to hurt him. <laughs> I got a call from Pat before this got really far along. He said, you know what? He said, the lawyers at the plain dealer aren't going to allow me to do this. And they don't want me to get hurt doing this kind of thing on company time. That was the high point. Here's a bunch of lawyers who think I actually could hurt somebody. <laughs> and with that, that was the high point of my Christian career. Thank you very much again. I thank the committee. And I thank all of you. Next inductee will be Sean Crozier. Make sure your brother gives you the money before you come up so you can get your plaque from <laughs> Mr. Anthony. Our next inductee, Sean Crozier, made his name as both coach and official. Sean began his coaching career as alma mater, West Liberty University, where he served as assistant coach. 
Sean went on to become the head coach at Indian Creek before returning to Steubenville, his high school alma mater, and taking on the head coaching position in 2004. When Sean's coaching career ended, he continued officiating in Ohio and West Virginia. Sean refereed state tournaments in both those states as well as the OVAC tournament for 26 years. Along with state tournaments, the OVAC tournament, Sean worked in such tournaments as the Hefner, Top Gun, Ironman, and Barnesville tournaments. Sean also worked the inaugural junior high, junior high state tourney and the OVAC junior high tourney. Sean has been recognized as the Larry Deaton OVAC official of the year on three occasions and has spent over 30 years as an official making many contributions to the sport of wrestling during that time. As along with extra money today. Ladies and gentlemen, I present for induction the Ohio chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Sean Crozier. First of all, I want to thank the Hall of Fame committee. Uh, I'm going to name a few people, Joel, Ray, Steve, Andy, Robin, Dick, uh, Stephanie, and Gordy. Uh, your planning, organization, attention to detail is very obvious today. Uh, being a former school administrator, uh, I know what it, what it takes to put on an event like today. Uh, a lot of time and effort involved, and uh, you guys are to be commended. When I start to think of people that have been inducted into the National Hall of Fame, Ohio chapter of the years, I can't help but get some chills. Uh, to think that I'm being recognized for something that I truly love uh, was never imaginable. Coaches like Huska, Ford, Ferguson, Kabali, Peters, Riggs, Powell, DeSabato, uh, officials like Matucci, Deaton, Kish, Campolo, Anthony, I'm honored to be in such company. I also want to congratulate the class of 2022. It's quite humbling to be recognized with such, with such amazing people and your awesome contributions to the sport. There are a few uh, West Virginia Chapter Hall of Fame members here that I would like to recognize today. Uh, Jack Regis, the secretary of the uh, Ohio Valley Wrestling Association back in the Valley and a longtime West Virginia state official and also Dr. Uh, Dan Doyle, who I believe back in 1973 may have been a state champ in West Virginia, uh, but he's also a former coach and school superintendent, and now he is the OVAC wrestling tournament director. Uh, so I wanna recognize those two guys. Thanks for coming today. I'm truly lucky to share today with my lovely wife, Kim, of 43 years. Uh, you guys in the room know how fortunate we are to have a supportive woman in our life that doesn't mind spending long, cold winters alone at home. Uh, so thank you, honey. Uh, you're awesome. I love you, sweetheart. Uh, my son, Thad, and his wife, uh, Morgan, were able to make the trip today. Uh, Thad was a, a decent wrestler back in the day and, and not too bad of an official, uh, but I really think his talent lies in being a, being a coach. And right now he does a heck of a job with his son Landon. So, so far he's doing pretty good. A quick shout out to my daughter, Kelly. Uh, she's back home uh, taking care of some in-laws at the house so that all of us were able to come out here today and, and spend the day with you guys. So, uh, I love you two guys and hope you understand why I probably wasn't around very much in, during your high school careers out coaching and officiating myself. Uh, my parents introduced me to the sport of wrestling back in the 60s as a spectator. And uh, little did I know I was going to become my oldest brother's wrestling dummy in the living room. So imagine a 175 pound brute wrestling somebody that weighed about 100 pounds. Uh, trying to practice every move he's learning for the first time back on me in the living room. So Matt Burns really didn't affect us too much because we were so rug burned up at the time it really didn't matter. Uh, but it didn't take me long to take what I learned, practice it on a younger brother Jeff, who in turn practiced it on the youngest brother Rick. So it all worked out pretty well. Also have two sisters, 
the oldest, she's going to appreciate me saying this, but the oldest, Cheryl, uh, she was the one that always kept Jim and Chet from beating the hell out of me every day. And then uh, the youngest and toughest Crozier, all of them, was Patty. Uh, she had to grow up in the house with four boys in the sport of wrestling. Uh, I think if they would have had girls wrestling back in the day, there's no doubt in my mind that those two girls probably would have been state champs. Uh, so I want to thank my brothers and sisters for their never-ending support. And Tim, Jill, Chris, Aaron, uh, thanks for taking time out of your day to come and hang out with us. I appreciate it. I'm sure all of us in the room would not be where we are today without help and guidance of some role models in our life. I want to recognize a few of those people that, who unfortunately are no longer with us today. Uh, first, my mom and dad. Uh, they would have been so proud to share this moment today. Uh, Betty and Bill, you've done good. And uh, my two high school wrestling coaches, both who went on to be longtime administrators, uh, Gene Watkins, Gene Milko. Uh, they emphasize conditioning, drilling, working hard, uh, just being tough. And uh, I think I patterned myself after them, and they're probably the reason why I learned to love wrestling so much. Uh, after high school, I was forced enough to go on to West Liberty State College, where I, where I wrestled under legendary coach and Hall of Famer Dr. Vince Monceau. Uh, wasn't very good, didn't have a stellar career at West Liberty. Uh, I think he brought me there to be a, a wrestling dummy for my best friend in high school, Rick Spencer. And uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it here today, but we had a, had a, lot, of, a lot of good times growing up. Uh, the good thing that did come out of West Liberty was I got a chance to officiate wrestle offs. And, and I think that's where I learned to pick up the sport of wrestling, or to officiate the sport of wrestling. So I want to credit Dr. Monceau for, uh, for giving me that chance. Uh, another person that had a a powerful impact on me was uh, Dr. Dan Keenan, former superintendent of Mill City Schools. Uh, he took a chance on me back in the day, married, got a daughter, just lost my job. He was able to convince me to get my butt back to school, finish my degree, and then he took a chance before I even graduated from college uh, by hiring me offering me a job and a coaching job in Student City Schools. Uh, around 76, I joined the Officials Association and met guys like Larry Deaton and Steve Kish and Bill Welker. Uh, again, those guys are Hall of Famers in their own right. Uh, but the problem was, I, I learned you had the National Federation rules, you had the Ohio rules, you had the West Virginia rules. And then you had what was known as the Deaton Rules. And, you know, as a young official, you could see where you'd get a little confused with all those different rules. But I was always told, when in doubt, follow the Deaton Rules. So I want to thank those guys for helping me out immensely in my career. Uh, being able to work in the Ohio Valley uh, with the guys that I got a chance to work with. It's probably the reason why I stayed in officiating for so long. Uh, you, you officials know it's not really a whole lot of fun out there at times. But, uh, you know, there, there are some memories that I want to talk about just real quick. I'll mention them. Uh, during the West Virginia State Tournament with Jack and, and meeting the best self-proclaimed official to ever come out of the state of West Virginia, George Keeney. Uh, officiating a grudge match after the OVAC wrestling tournament is over on a Saturday night, uh, we hold it down at the Wheeling Civic Center, and they take the mats up, and underneath the mats are plywood, and underneath the plywood is ice for the hockey rink. Well, the plywood was still down, and uh, my brother Rick and Charlie Keenan decide they're going to go out and settle the score out on the plywood. So I got to officiate that match. And then I got to take them both to Wheeling Hospital after the match was over. Uh, it, it wasn't good. Uh, getting to wrestle a, or officiate a state tournament with my brother Jim. And uh, the last thing is uh, uh, the association has a smoker down in Martins Ferry every year. And we get together, have a, have a beer or two, play some poker. 
Well, I made the mistake to get up and use the restroom, and somebody left a real nice gift in my Tupperware container of change. I'm not going to get into what the gift was. You can probably ask some people that are here with me, but sticks in my mind. But anyway, the camaraderie and friendship made along the way will never be forgotten. And, you know, having a few beers after tournaments was definitely an added bonus. Uh, another group of people I want to give credit to are, are coaches. Uh, there's a lot of them that come to mind. I'm not going to mention names. Uh, Eric Tokenen, uh, John Stevenson, Nick Trombetta, Larry Shaw. If you could officiate at these people's places and put up with their antics, you could officiate anywhere. Uh, but they did teach me a very valuable skill, and that was focus. I learned to put the rabbit ears away, focus on the wrestlers, so I do want to give the coaches their due credit. You know, I probably wouldn't have been where I ended up being without them giving me some guidance along the year. Uh, sometimes in life, you just have to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, I'm going to match in Claymont. Eric Tokenen asked me to come out. Uh, it's a match with Medina Buckeye, Claymont. Hack Jim. Uh, Claymont doesn't lose matches, especially at home. Well, they lost. And even with Eric's help, they still lost. It was the first time I'd ever been escorted off the gym floor to the locker room and kindly told to just sort of hang out in the locker room while they had a chance to get the, the gym cleared out. I thought I'd done a pretty decent job of officiating the match, but maybe not. But anyway, I get a phone call a couple days later, Jim Butali. Uh, that leads to the Medina Invitational. That leads to meeting Vince Matucci. Vince Matucci takes care of me. Uh, I, you know, for some reason, I don't know why, but he just really took me under his wing and uh, career sort of took off from there, getting out of the valley and getting around the state, uh, getting to officiate with the best guys in the state of Ohio, uh, Tony, Toby Dunlap, Tony Campolo, Ray Anthony, Steve Kish, uh, Rick Chrysler, uh, the list goes on. Uh, these guys, along with countless others, you know, they just put me, put me at a level where I never thought I would get to. Uh, the exposure from Jim and Jim and Vince just led me to, you know, the most prestigious tournaments around the state of Ohio and getting, get, getting a chance to go to Wisconsin and win a match or a tournament. I'm always going to be grateful to those guys for those opportunities. Uh, even though I had great role models, mentors, uh, nothing compares to the ball-busting critiques from the brothers. Uh, you know, if you screwed up a, a call, which believe it or not, it happened. Uh, we, we'd hear about it, or I'd hear about it, usually in a much different way than what Ray or Vince Matucci would have handled it. The brothers were brutally honest, and uh, you know, you either got better or you, you faced their wrath. So the brother sessions had a big impact on the four of us, improved the coaching and officiating. Uh, the association with the sport now is more management. Uh, running tournaments, so I want to thank Student City Schools uh, for allowing me to continue to give back. I want to thank uh, former head coaches Rick Camaletti, uh, Dan Keenan, Mike Blackburn, uh, elementary wrestling coordinator Joe Marasino, uh, former assistant coach and next level director Ed Shinovsky. Appreciate all your help back in the day. Uh, you know, when it comes time to host tournaments, you always want to have guys that are going to be able to help you run a smooth and efficient, and efficient tournament. So again, Coach Blackburn, Coach Huffman, Sean Smith, without you guys uh, and the family, Jim, Jeff, Rick, Thad, Landon, without you guys, tournament directings, you know, it can be it can be hell. But you got to have guys around you. So it's awesome to be able to share the sport of wrestling with my wife, two kids, all of my siblings. Without them, I wouldn't be getting this amazing award. Wrestling has always been at the center of the Crozier family, and it continues today. Like most other wrestling families, it seems to flow through our blood. 
uh, the tradition being passed from generation to generation. Uh, there's nothing like sitting in the stands and watching a, a son or grandsons and nephews and all of that uh, carrying on with the sport that gave us all so much. So in closing, uh, you're given opportunities in life and what I see is two choices when you get those opportunities. You take advantage of the chance, you work hard to do the best you can not to disappoint the people that gave you your shot. Or two, you squander your opportunities and make excuses for why you didn't get what you thought you deserved. I hope I have made the people who have supported me through life proud of my accomplishments. None of them would be possible without, without you guys. Thank you. I stuck with the sport and it still didn't encourage me to stay didn't win very much for the one year I passed on the programs I think I had one or two victories I kept trying to pen in another one in front of mine that looked like I won more so I became the water board for my brother's teams and then some of you guys you guys hold clinics all the time and you always say if I affect one kid in the room if one kid gets affected by this message So talking about the strength of the community here, I think we started getting into the first two inductees. I think they did a great job when we started getting to some of the coaches of this program. I think you're gonna to start to see where the foundation of how strong this community really is. And I think anytime you can go somewhere and win, that shows you could be a good coach, but when you can go to multiple places and win, I think that shows you're a phenomenal coach. And this next guy, um, he probably, you know, he maybe doesn't watch Star Wars, but when people ask me about Joe Drager, I think he says he's the Obi-Wan Kenobi of coaching in my book. So our next inductee here is Joe Drago. Joe has been around wrestling for over 45 years, and in, and in those 45 years, 20 of those as a head coach where he amassed a 20 and, 20, 209 and 49 record. Joe Dra Drago began his coaching career at Parma Schaff Junior High in 1970 as assistant coach. He later moved to Brooklyn High School where he spent six years as assistant coach before taking over as a head coach in 1978. During that time, as assistant coach and head coach at Brooklyn, Joe coached 14 state qualifiers and one champ. His teams earned a Cuyahoga Conference Championship and five Inland Conference Championships while he garnered six Coach of the Year recognitions. In 1985, Joe took over as a head coach at Tri-C and coached 27 All-Americans and two national champs. And I think one of those was Brian Keck, and he's beaten my butt before when I was in high school. In his seven years, Joe's teams won six regional championships and was named Regional Coach of the Year six times. Joe coached 61 state qualifiers and assisted with three other state champs. For 12 years, Joe coached a dominant summer wrestling club. Joe also served as the president of the Greater Cleveland Wrestling Coaches Official Association and has been inducted into the Brooklyn City Schools Hall of Fame. I like to tell people all the time when they ask me about Coach Drago, in my own words, I always tell people he's a master technician. I think he's a phenomenal motivator. He's one of the few people in my early life who told me you can live a clean life and do things the right way and still get on top. And as a coach, I think it's easy when you're in charge, you can run the program your way. But I consider not only Joe Drago a top-notch head coach, but I consider him a top-flight assistant everywhere he went. And people who know wrestling up in Cuyahoga, <clears throat> excuse me, Cuyahoga County will know that eventually Coach Paul Obers will be here in this Hall of Fame sometime soon, I'm sure. When he was a number two in Royalton, you always knew that they were going to have tough programs. So without further ado, I'd like to present for induction in the Ohio Chapter of National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Joe Drago.
Thank you, Alex. First of all, I'm honored to be here today. Um, it's a great honor and I'm humbled to be here. I'd like to thank uh, Eric Tokenin. Eric, thank you for nominating me. Uh, I would like to thank the committee for allowing me to be part of this. Hall of Fame, what a great, great honor. I'd like to congratulate the other inductees. It's a pretty unique group. And what a good day to have a great day. And it really is a great day. So I'd like to start off by thanking a lot of people, but I'm gonna try to do it in a short period of time. Some of them are here today, some of them are not, some of them have passed away. So the first three I wanna mention have passed away. And it goes back to, as was earlier mentioned, goes back to my high school days. In Parma, Brian, Parma, good day for Parma. And it was my head wrestling coach at Valley Forge High School. And that was Steve Rudo and his assistant, John Rupert. And I learned from them what a foundation for wrestling is and how to be a good coach. And the third person I need to, to uh, uh, thank you, have a thank you for, is Pat Sturdivant. Pat Sturdivant was my drill partner at Valley Forge. And for all of you who have wrestled and all of you who have coached, you know how important a drill partner is. I made him better, he made me better. And that's the way it was supposed to work. So from Valley Forge, I went on to Bowling Green. And at Bowling Green, um, I met a couple of great people. Uh, first of all was Paul Obers, just mentioned. Paul, little did I know at that particular time that our, our wrestling futures were going to crisscross for the next 30 years. And I'll get into that a little bit as I go. And I uh, also had two great roommates who, who came up today. Dr. Greg Kavaska, nice to see you here today. And Leon Skaransky, still good friends of mine, and uh, appreciate appreciate them being here today. From uh, Bowling Green, I went on to Shaft, as was mentioned, Shaft Junior High School at the time in Parma. And then I had the opportunity to go to Brooklyn, and lo and behold, when I went to Brooklyn, who had just been assigned the head wrestling job, but Paul Oberst. What a coincidence. So we hooked up together as two young guys trying to figure this whole thing out a little bit. And we inherited a great program. And under Paul's leadership, we went on and had a number of really, really good years. But Paul decided to leave and get out of education. When he left, I took over the Brooklyn program. And I was fortunate enough during those next couple of years to have Brooklyn's first state champion, Kevin Friedel. And uh, that helped me out tremendously, knowing that I can get to that point and uh, we can win. From there, it opened up the door to Cuyahoga Community College. And that was a big moment in my life where things changed quite a bit. We had great success there, and uh, a big part of that was due to Jim Hewitt. Jim was my assistant coach. Jim and I hooked up together early in my tenure there, and he was my assistant during that particular time. And I mentioned that because later on, this world will flip. But Jim and I had a nice run there. Uh, during those times, this is Cuyahoga Community College in Parma, and we wrestled Ohio State, Ohio University, Edinburgh, Indiana. Uh, there was a lot of teams there that we wrestled. So we had a two-year school, but we were wrestling some big-time competition. And it showed out at the uh, Nationals, where we, we placed highly every year. Now, during that time when we were there, one of the great wrestlers that we had right there was Matt Yinger. Matt's here today. Matt from Nelsonville, you've probably been known from Nelsonville, York. Uh, state champion. Uh, he went on and became a national runner-up for us uh, at Tri-C. And uh, from there, uh, he went back to coaching and again had some great teams at Nelsonville. Two of the national champions that we had were Anthony Washington and we had Brian Keck. And that was a great pleasure again to see those guys uh, be at the top of the podium. From there, things got a little bit crazy. So I went out from there, I went to uh, Cuyahoga Heights. Meanwhile, this whole time, I'm still teaching at Brooklyn High School. And for any of you administrators or coaches that have ever done this, teach at one school and coach at another, you know there's a lot of hoops and hurdles that you have to go through. So I went to Cuyahoga Heights, and while I was there, Tom Evans was not there. Okay, at that particular time, it was probably the only couple years when he was not there. 
and I had a chance to be assistant coach there and the head coach. Then from there I went to North Royalton. And lo and behold, who's the head coach at North Royalton? Paul Oberst, needing an assistant coach. Great. So I hooked up with Paul, and we had some real nice years at North Royalton. That worked out really well. Then we went on to, uh, from there, went to uh, St. Ignatius. Had a nice run at St. Ignatius. And then went to uh, Brunswick, and Deliria, back to Royalton, Independence, and uh, a couple of middle schools were thrown in there also. So overall, overall, as you're looking at me, you probably recognize me, you say, oh, yeah, I remember that guy, but I don't remember exactly where I know him from. Well, I coached at 11 different schools. Some of them I mentioned, some of them I didn't there. And then for 47 years, 47 years I coached. And now, thanks to Sean Folk, the head wrestling coach at uh, North Royalton, I'm back. So I'll be starting year 48. So I will mention this, I did volunteer to come back here to, to North Royalton schools, and uh, he hooked me up at the middle school. God bless all you middle school coaches, okay? That's a whole different animal down there. So I was more than happy to move on to uh, come back to the high school. Uh, I want to backtrack if I can. During our time at, at Tri-C, Jim Hewitt had his son Mike who was coming up through the ranks as a wrestler, and he wanted to get him involved with summer AAU wrestling. So we hooked up and we went down to Mount Vernon with Coach Brown down there and got involved with the Junior Olympic teams down there. And, and we ended up coaching a couple of the teams down there. And that was good. That was a great experience. Again, we were traveling and excellent. Well, at the same time, Jim met a guy in, in Brunswick who had a boxing gym. It was called Sampson's. So we said, hey, how about if we bring some mat wrestling mats in here and we'll just start bringing some kids in. So sure enough, we started that, and we got some kids that come in, then we started, started getting some good kids, then we started getting some real good kids, and then we started getting some real, real good kids coming through. And then we decided, well, we'll have our own team then. So we did that, we called it Samson's. Jim was the head coach then, and I was his assistant, and he also brought uh, onto, on board with that particular teams were Ken DeAngelis. Ken is here today, and Ken is the head coach currently at Independence High School in the Cleveland area. So we had some great runs there. Uh, we went down to Disney. We won Disney a couple times. Uh, we went to the Junior Olympics. We won the Junior Olympics a couple times. And some of our good wrestlers that we had, not good, excellent wrestlers we had, had on those teams were Alex. Alex was our closer for a couple teams there. What a great honor it was coaching him. What a great closer. And one of the first teams we had was going to the Junior Olympics, we needed a, a 95 pounder. Not 195, 95. So Coach Ober says, I got this kid, Boomer Fetchko, he weighs 92 pounds. He's pretty tough. So he said, okay, we'll take him, we'll take him. And sure enough, he was tough. And he kept growing, he kept getting bigger and better and better and better. And uh, he, he wrestled with us for uh, a number of years. He went on to place at the state tournament. He went on to become an All-American at Findlay. I know Findlay's coming up here in just a second since Findlay week here. And he was an All-American at Findlay uh, for Coach Nelson. And then he went on, he, went on, he was assistant coach at Buffalo, assistant coach at Cleveland State, and now he's the head coach at Lake Erie College. So if you know anybody still looking for a place to go, Lake Erie College, Boomer's sitting back there. I'm sure he would appreciate it. So in closing, if I can get to this point here, I am up here accepting this honor. But I can take this honor and this nice plaque that I'm gonna get, and I can divide it up into a thousand pieces, literally a thousand pieces, and I can pass it out to a thousand different people who have influenced me in a very, very positive way, not only wrestling, but as being a human being, and help me get to this point where I'm standing right here because it's a long way from Parma, Ohio, to Columbus, to Stillwater. So I thank each and every one of those people that helped me out. Thank you very much.
<clears throat> we're going to jump around the program, but real quick, we're talking about, he was very generous, calling me his closer on those teams a couple times. Uh, talking about humility, I was just telling the guys at the table I'm at, should we go down to Disney, we wrestle, we got a really tough team. And I'm the guy who's always finishing off these dual meets. And uh, you have the community bracket, the all-star bracket, so obviously with that Samson's team, you're in the all-star bracket. So we go to, I never wrestled Junior Olympics before in my life. And I'm working my way through thinking this is easy. So I never had to go top out. Never had to wrestle what you consider a parterre position. I'm thinking this is easy. Take everybody down, then you don't let them up. So Coach Drago was standing there in the corner, and I think Coach Urbis was with us that year, and uh, at the same Junior Olympics, and he goes, hey, that guy over there is the best freestyle wrestler in the country. And I looked at him, and I'm usually pretty humble, but he was about the size of this podium. And I go, that guy? He goes, that guy's the best guy in the country. I go, I was like, don't worry about it, this is over. So I had no clue what passivity was or anything. So in the first 15 seconds, I'm down. He texts me within about another five seconds. And then he didn't say anything to me. He's giving me my shorts and my shirt back since it was Steve Mako who ended up going to become a two-time national champion. So that I learned another uh, page in humility from the sport of wrestling. So like I said, we're gonna jump around next. We got his picture up, we're gonna go to Dr. Randy Robel. Dr. Robel is well known throughout the wrestling community in Ohio and has served as the uh, head team physician to the Ohio University Bobcats, Hilliard Dar Darby, and Otterbein College. Dr. Robel has been the medical director to the Ohio State Wrestling Championships for over 30 years, and he has spent more than four decades as a team physician, starting with the Iowa Wrestling Team as assistant in 1982. Dr. Robel has served as a tournament physician for the NCAA Division I Championships, the the Olympic Trials, Junior World Championships in Barcelona, and World Championships in Stockholm. Since 2002, Dr. Robo has served as Chairman of the Joint Advisory Committee on Medicine for the OHSAA. Dr. Robo has also served as a board member of the Ohio Health Sports Medical, overseeing 160 athletic trainers, 50 high schools, six colleges, and two professional sports teams. Dr. Robo has been recognized by U U.S. News and World Report as a top doctor in sports medicine from 2013 to 2021. And Dr. Robo was also inducted into Ohio Wrestling Officials Hall of Fame in 2021. Who doesn't need a good fungus guy? I present for induction into the Ohio chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Dr. Randy Robo. Thanks for that uh, very good introduction, the new fungus guy. Uh, so we, we all, I can start with the story of how we, how we got started in wrestling, I'll tell you mine. Uh, I, I dabbled in wrestling a little bit in high school, but my college future was in football, and uh, I went to Cornell and played football, and thought wrestling was behind me, but I ended up doing my orthopedic residency at the University of Iowa. And I went there and I asked, what do I need to do to become a good sports medicine doctor? And the, my mentor said, well, we've got to find you a team. And he goes, I can't cover everything here, so you can do soccer, or volleyball, or basketball, or wrestling, gymnastics. And I said, well, is the wrestling team any good? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course he laughed, and, and they had, had told me they'd won five national championships in a row at that point in time. And so I, I signed up uh, to work with the wrestling team. And uh, for the next, I won four national championships with them for the next uh, five years working with, with Dan Gable. And so 40 years later, now I'm up here uh, in front of you, and uh, I'd like to thank all of you for coming, especially my family and friends who are at the table over there, and, uh, and of course the, the committee and the board of directors here for the Hall of Fame. And, uh, you know who you are, but I'll just say, you know, Steve, uh, Kish, Andy, DeSavito, Joel, Ray Anthony, Robin Rayfield, and um, I thank you for this, this great honor. It's a privilege to me to me be up here. I feel very lucky, of course. Yeah, but I, I, like the other inductees have said, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be up here without you. You know what what you gave to me was way more than what I, I gave back to you. I appreciate the friendships you've extended to me over the years, and what I saw you do, uh, and the way we thought about wrestling was, was kind of the same for me. It made me pursue what I do, my job, my craft, 
with passion, and I saw the determination, the dedication, the discipline that all us in the wrestling community have, and that inspired me every day to be the best orthopedic surgeon that I can be. And I, I'm grateful to so many of you, and many of you in the audience that I know and I've worked with in different capacities over the years, and I'd like to acknowledge a, a few individuals among the coaches and officials, athletic trainers, physical therapists, and doctors that I've worked with over the years. And as I said, I started in Iowa, and working with Dan Gable, and I would tell you, to those of you who don't know him, you know, I mean, his greatest strength was probably as a motivator, and he motivated me again to be my best at what I do. And, and coincidentally, that was I, that was my first Ohio wrestling connection. I, I, John Heffernan was on the, uh, the Iowa wrestling team at that time, and I've, you know, I still see him every year at, uh, with, it, with his work at uh, St. Ed's. And then when I moved after that, I went to Cincinnati, and that's how I ended up in Ohio. And I worked with a bunch of great guys down there. You may remember Dick McCoy, Ron Masonic, Jeff Geyer, Dan Booty, and Bob Stoll, who followed me up to Columbus and, and has become a lifelong friend of mine. And also at that time, I, I had my first introduction to uh, wrestling in the MAC conference. And I started with, uh, with Chuck Angelo, who was over there at my table with his wife, Martha. And in my last two years with Chuck, we won uh, two MAC championships, which was really a lot of fun and very cool. And I also listened to him every day tell me about that crazy Huska guy at, at Ohio University. <laughs> but just, by, again, by coincidence, I ended up in Columbus. And right over, right as soon as I got here, I took over being the team doctor at, at Ohio University. And we won the next two MAC championships, so that was four in a row for me. And uh, I'm thinking, this is pretty damn easy. <laughs> But I also had to listen to Harry tell me how crazy that Chuck Angelo was in Miami. <laughs> and that, now I've been working with Joel uh, for about almost 25 years now, and that we're continuing to try and bring those championships uh, back to Athens. And at that point, you know, I thought I had enough, but then Otterbein started their program five years ago, and I started working work with uh, Brent Rastetter at, at, uh, at Otterbein, and that's been, been a lot of fun as well. We've, we've had some good times there. He's, he hasn't had any national championships, but he did have a wrestler go on to be part of the World Tag Team Championships for the for the WWE. <laughs> and then uh, it's been a, I've been more of a moral supporter for for Tom Ryan at Ohio State, but I really enjoyed spending time with Tom because next to Dan Gable, I, I feel like Tom was probably one of the best motivators out there, and that's a real strength for him. And of course, I couldn't forget most of you I worked with at, at, through the, the high school level. And just want to thank a few, so, you know, coaches that I've worked with, like Andy DeSavido, Dom, Ken, Dom DeSavido, Ken Ash, David Grant, Dave, uh, Dennis Lieberger, John Riggs, and, and countless other guys. And of course, the officials who are uh, in the area, who many of them are right here with uh, Jack and uh, Jeff Wu and Tony Campolo and uh, Jack Cruzy. And I, I, uh, I appreciate everything that you've taught me and that the ability we've had to work together as, as uh, people supporting the wrestlers that are out there. And as uh, Alex said, I've, I've been at over 30 state tournaments now, 31 or 32, something like that. And uh, I've had great doctors, trainers to work with there. And uh, But you all know uh, Bruce Maurer, and Bo Rugg, and Dan Kutcher, who have been a very important part of making that tournament run smoothly. I also couldn't do my job without athletic trainers and physical therapists who really support what I do and help me uh, take care of uh, athletes. They're, they're our partners. Uh, uh, one of the single out, Larry Sutton, who's worked with me for 32 years and he's been a key part of the weight management program in Ohio and also a trainer at, at Grove City. And Steve Mendocino is at my table to the, to the right, uh, to your left. And uh, an Ohio State wrestler, a great physical therapist with many of my wrestlers. I, and, uh, for those of you at the state tournament, I know we have a great team of doctors. It's really been about the same guys for about 15 years. And uh, because he's here, I'd like to single out Kyle Hott, also at the same table. And uh, as you know, Kyle is one of the greatest wrestlers in Ohio history. And I don't think I'm exaggerating there. He's, we've got a banner of him in the back of the room. But now he's on his way to becoming one of the best sports medicine doctors in Ohio. Finally, I'd like to thank uh, Don Moxley, you may know a Barnesville grad, a uh, state wrestler, uh, who did a lot of the re research that I did and published in, in the area of, of wrestling. And uh, just in the same vein as uh, Brian Brakeman, I once did color commentary
for a couple wrestling matches, but the announcer was Bob Dealey. So I hardly say I qualified as the color in, in, that, in that team. So, uh, and lastly, I thank some of the wrestlers and the privilege I've had to work with some of the very, very best guys over the years. And I'll single out a few of our local central uh, district guys and a few others that I've met really, really admired. Uh, Jeff Ratliff, Tommy Rollins, Ross Thatcher, Brad Harris, Logan Steber, David Taylor, Bo Jordan. I've been really lucky to, to be able to deal with athletes of that caliber. And I want to, I want to close with one thought in a small story. Uh, and, and it's really about love and the love that we have here as a group, the love we have for our sport and for each other as we work together to, to make this just the best experience we can for everyone. And this story involves uh, Don DeSabido and his son, Angelo. And in Angelo Sr., he was at the state tournament. He had injured his elbow. And I had given him a brace. It was kind of a restrictive brace in his elbow, but he needed it to wrestle. But he got into the match. It wasn't going well, so now the brace was a big problem. And he tried to take it off. And his dad said, keep the brace on. He yelled out, everybody heard in the arena, I don't like the effing brace. <laughs> no. Why did they argue? And then went on again, so he kept the brace on. And went a few more minutes more. He tried to pull off the brace again, and he looks at his dad, and he said, I hate this effing brace. And his dad turned to him and said, keep the effing brace on. <laughs> and finally, Angelo had him. He turned to Dom and said, F you. And it just so happened that that year, I was working with a young medical doctor who had a wrestling background. But he was a sh short, little, stocky, Indian-American guy. And he was wa he'd watched the DeSabados wrestle over the years and kind of ad admired what they did, admired Dom's coaching. And he, we're watching this match at this mat side of the state tournament, and he heard this happen. And when Angelo said, F you to his dad, he turned to me, his jaw dropped in complete disbelief and said, did he just say that, what I think he said to his father? And I, I, he did, of course. And after the match, I told Dom, and Dom said, introduce me to your doctor friend. So Dom went up to him, and he said, Doc, he said, I'm sure my crazy loudmouth Italian family is quite a bit different from your traditional prim and proper Indian family, but I want you to know that we have just as much love for each other as your family does. And for me, that story it says a lot about what we do here in wrestling and our, our wrestling family. And in closing, I want to thank you. Thank you all. I want to say I love you all. Thomas is up next, my personal high school coach. Um, I think Coach Drago is one of said coaching middle schoolers might be very tough and it's blessed there, but I think blessing Coach Evans, I think Coach, me and my brother, and deal with my family, that we took some blessings also. Our next inductee is Tom Evans. Tom began his coaching career as assistant at Bethel Tate for one year before returning to Northeast Ohio where he served as assistant wrestling football and track coach at the illustrious Real High School before taking over as head coach in 1989. He coached multiple conference champion state qualifiers at Berea before moving to Larry Catholic and taking on head coach, uh, head coach football job along with the assistant wrestling coaching job. Evans also served as president of the Greater Cleveland Wrestling Coaches Official Association, coached the All-Star Meet on four occasions. He was also the GCWCOA, very wordy, representative to the State Coaches Association, and served on the Ohio Wrestling Hall of Fame Committee for several years. Evans moved into school administration and began assisting with tournament operations at several local tournaments, as well as assisting with inaugural girls regional state tournaments in 2019. Evans was inducted to the Ohio Rest Wrestling Officials Hall of Fame and for the past eight years returned home as superintendent at his alma mater, Colorado Heights. But this goes back to, it's nice when he writes his own synopsis so I can go <laughs> off script. 
It's nice when a guy started this out that you have a strong community. Any difficulty that Tom faced in his life, he leaned on this strong community we have. But as a wrestler, we never felt that. He always put us first. If that was somebody needed a ride home, somebody needed a warm meal, somebody needed wrestling shoes, somebody needed a place to go on a holiday, if it was one of his former wrestlers in college years later needing to pick me up and tell me that he loves me, and I know I'm not the only one he does that to. If as a coach, he's stepped down to move on in his life and then appoints who could be at the time what I needed as a wrestler going to my senior year of high school. And not only he become a special person to me, but along the way, he's part of the fabric we talked about where if there's anything in the sport of wrestling, he'll be the first one there. That's setting up tables, setting up clocks, setting up mats, cleaning mats, putting things away, raising funds. There's so many avenues you can do to help. So when I talk about this year's class going in, not only I think it's wonderful that we've had so many people with great credentials as coaches, doctors, media members, but Tom, I think, is a prime example in the state of Ohio how strong this base is because without people like Tom, a lot of the functions we do attend, a lot of the tournaments we go to will not be put on without people like Tom. And I know as superintendent in this day and age, it's very rare, he's fought for his teachers and his students and put himself on the chopping block many a times to make sure that his teachers have the tools they need and his students are taken care of the way they need to be taken care of. And as a former wrestler of his, I can tell you, we felt loved and taken care of, Coach. So without further ado, I present for induction the Ohio chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Tom Evans. about some of your greatest fears in life. I just experienced one when Alex with a microphone introducing me. Um, I'm thankful for many of the stories that he left out. Uh, I want to congratulate all the other inductees. Uh, I'm incredibly honored and humbled to be part of such a prestigious group. And, and, and Deb, I'm going to leave you out of part of this. I also feel very old when I look at this group. Deb, you're, you're not in that category yet. So. Um, I want to thank the committee, the tremendous committee. Uh, Dick Minacci's not here, but Dick is uh, actually one of the guys that, when I was, I think, I don't know, 10 or 11 years old, went off to Camp Conestoga wrestling camp, where uh, Dick ran wrestling camp, and I got to meet Bruce Trammell. Uh, Tommy Eller was my camp counselor, lifelong friend, and, and some of those relationships. Uh, also want to thank the committee for scheduling this event during a Browns game because you kept me from sweating at the TV all afternoon today. So, very thankful for that. Um, honored to have Alex introduce me. I'm gonna tell one Alex the pan of his story. I'm gonna save the rest of the stories for drinks later, but Alex, I not only was Alex's wrestling coach, I was his football coach. So, from August until March, Alex had to deal with me every day. Um, and, we lived two blocks away from each other as well, so depending on where the match was, the garbage men knew whose house we were at afterwards, either the Stepanovich house or the Evans house, by whose garbage cans were filled with beer bottles. Um, but Alex is a ninth grader, the first freshman ever to play varsity football at Brea High School. And when Dave McFarland brought him up, Dave's sitting over here, uh, he just brought him up to play defense. He goes, well, I'm gonna put him on one side of the ball, and I don't want anybody else messing with him because at six, three, 265 pounds, everybody wants to be his coach. So I was the only one that was allowed to coach Alex. So it, it was really strange. Alex would come off the field from the defensive series and you saw a defensive tackle put on a headset because I was in the box talking to him about what he had just done that series. But Alex followed a state qualifier as a heavyweight at, Kaga, at, at Berea. And our first meet every year was at Westlake was a round robin tournament. And my alma mater, Kaga Heights, was there. And my previous heavyweight had some knockdown dragouts with their heavyweight. And, and my previous heavyweight was a kid that 
was a state qualifier, and to this day, I can't tell you what his move was, but he knew how to make other kids stop. I used to tell people his best move was the big splash, right? Like, somebody chewed on him, he'd splash him and walk around, and we'd win two to one. Um, the father of that heavyweight, at, we get to Wesley, comes up, he goes, man, I'm so glad that kid graduated. Him and my son had some knockdown drag his last, and all I'm thinking about is, wait till he sees this one. So he's, he's all happy, he's joyful. We get cog hypes in the very first match, and Alec Tech falls, his senior son, who's a state-ranked wrestler. And that dad looks at me, and he was so stinking mad, like I was saying back, I, I honestly got to know what to say to him. I said, ah, you're gonna, you thought the other one was good, where do you see this one? Um, thanks to Alex, I don't sleep at night, because my shoulder's been separated multiple times. Um, but that's, that's, that goes on. There's a lot of people to thank for putting up with my passion for wrestling. And I, I try to pay it forward through my entire career. <clears throat> Tina, what was the over-under when I get, started getting choked up? Tina knew that this was gonna happen. My brothers and sisters, five Evans children. <coughs> uh, I'm the middle, two older brothers, two younger sisters. Um, the, the, the thought of being in, in, ever inducted into an athletic hall of fame was out of my mind because Quite honestly, of the five of us, I was the sixth best athlete because the dog snuck in in front of me at some point in time. <laughs> my parents are shaking their head. <clears throat> my dad used to say, Tom, you can fall in a pile of shit and come out smelling like a rose. He was right. My children, lots of uh, late nights, weekends, my daughter, Learn math at the Columbia Invitational by counting bout sheets on the on the mats. Dad, there's three on two, two on one. We need another bout sheet. She started. She was a runner from the time she could walk at a wrestling tournament. My wife, Lisa. I don't think she knew what she was getting into, but this is full honesty. I'm not even the best coach in my own house. Um, she coaches the granddaughter's fifth grade volleyball team, and you want to see intensity come to a St. Jude's volleyball game. Thanks, Lisa. And my in-laws for making the trip down here, become part of my biggest fan club. Lots of friends. I know Bob Youngblood's down here with Joe Hanna. The, for me, standing here, it's all Bob's fault. Bob hired me to my first coaching job. I moved back to Cleveland. Uh, the day after I moved back, Bob said, um, hey, we need a football coach show up tomorrow at practice. Uh, and then I coached wrestling and and Trey, and then Bob also gave me my first head coaching job to my current athletic director, Ryan Kelber, uh, at Cuyahoga Heights, who was just athletic director of the year. Um, I appreciate the support. And all, the, all these friends back over here, the Stepanovich family, uh, Dave McFarland, who was there for me, uh, Joe Pickett, my lifelong friend. Um, I can't say enough about all you guys. Um, two stages of my life. My coaching career, when I took over at Berea, we were 0 2. That was 0 for two years. They hadn't won a match in two years, a dual meet in two years at Berea. We had 62 guys out for wrestling. Uh, one of the proudest moments of my life was the second week of practice. We used to run circles around the main hallway. The principal comes out to me, Gordy Billman says, Tom, your wrestlers got to run someplace else. I go, why, Gordy? We've always run here forever. He goes, they're intimidating some of the teachers. I wanted to give them a hug and a kiss. I said, that's the first time a Breer wrestler's intimidated anybody in a long time. <clears throat> uh, I learned from the best, Tom Anzi, football coach. This is, um, my after coaching life, I became an administrator. And actually I turned out an administrative job at one point in time because I had these two kids coming through the program. Uh, their names were Nick and Alex that uh, I had waited a lifetime to coach, so I turned out it. Uh, got into administration, uh, actually hadn't taken any of the classes, had a mentor say, you're gonna be an administrator, sign me up for a graduate class, and, and here I am today. And that, again, I've out kicked my coverage in every facet of my life, and for me to be a school superintendent, uh, my brothers and sisters still are amazed at that right now. Um, but uh, uh, I love this sport, I love assisting with tournaments, uh, Ray Anthony's never let me get too far from the sport. He knows that whenever he needs some kind of help or something going on with wrestling, who, to, who the first one to call is. Uh, my love 
our relationship with the officials has been fantastic. I got a group of officials over here, and, and I love this crew because as much as I've chewed on them and been the loudest guy in the gym, that I don't think there's a group that I support more. And I, and I love it because as an administrator, I even get to piss off some other administrators because we, we run a little we run a little tournament at the beginning of December, and uh, and I started hiring the officials for it, and I start paying them about $120 more than the other tournaments were paying them. And one of the guys of the tournament director said, hey, you're part of the league, you gotta pay the league rate. I said, bullshit, it's my tournament, I'm gonna pay them what I wanna pay them. I said, so I had the best officials working this little 10-team tournament at Cuyahoga Heights, but they needed to pay, be taken care of. I've also been a big advocate. Uh, I know how hurting we are for officials right now. Uh, if I had a dual meter or a double dual, I'd say, Ray, uh, send a young official over with one of the veteran officials. Let them work side by side, let them shadow. That's what we have to do if we're gonna encourage these young officials. Um, also, uh, I know Kenny DeAngelis is back here from our, our tribal independence. Kenny's one of the best young coaches in the state of Ohio. And, and I've recently contacted some of Kenny's former wrestlers and some of my former wrestlers to try and get a pool of guys to be coaches that are in college right now or just out of school just to say, hey, take the test. One of them's in Toledo. I said, we'll get you matches in Toledo. We'll find you matches. You need to pay it forward to our sport. Um, another time I fell in a pile, I stopped coaching in 2002. I get a phone call from WEOL in Lorraine, a little radio station asking me to start announcing high school football games. Later on, uh, uh, the story that they told me was, well, they were looking for somebody that they knew would ever get asked to coach football again, so they called me. Uh, pretty good choice. So for the last 22 years, I've been doing high school radio on, on uh, high school football games, and then I got called last year to, by Kent State. Uh, during COVID, they didn't have a color commentator for their football games, so I've been the color commentator for Kent State football for two years, and I just I was just asking uh, Coach Greenley where they're wrestling uh, Kent State this year because they've just asked me to do their ESPN3 broadcast. Any chance I get to promote our sport, I, I try and do that. I have a weekly radio show during the wrestling season in Lorain County. Uh, on Wednesday nights, we interview coaches, we talk about wrestling, and, I, and Lorain County is a great place to be. We do a preseason show where we where you introduce all the coaches and it, it just it, it allows me again to pay it forward to our sport and that then that brings me to girls when when girls wrestling started i said back in the early 2000s that women wrestling would be the savior for our sport that was when division one programs were cutting them because there's no title nine match for wrestling there were chopping programs everywhere and i remember cleveland heights had a couple of girl wrestlers and we were at a coaches association meeting and, and some of the coaches were right but i said stop this will save our sport. We need to encourage this, we need to make that happen. And I'm so proud of what they've done with girls wrestling. I volunteered at the state tournament and their regional tournament. And you know, I'm getting ready to step away from the superintendency. And I, there's, a, there's a couple superintendents in the room here today. I think we might be over the limit, Charlie Keenan. I, I think there's legal limits on how many you're allowed to have in a room at one time. But, um, but, but one of the things I know, my wife and I talk about retirement and, I, I said something about moving to Florida, she started laughing at me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? She goes, really, you're gonna move to Florida? She goes, you announce football games on the weekends and, and you do wrestling all winter long. When are we gonna go to Florida? So she, she gets it. Sometimes that's my breath of reality there. So um, I wanna thank the group. I wanna, I wanna again, congratulate everybody. Uh, this is an incredible honor and I'm incredibly humbled uh, by all this. So uh, thank you. Go wrestling. is Mr. Joe Hada Jr. Mr. Hada has dedicated his life to wrestling for over 50 years as an athlete, coach, and official. He was a national qualifier while wrestling for Heidelberg College in addition to earning four letters, 
serve as team captain and be recognized as a scholar athlete. Joe began his coaching career in Latonia, then moved to Mentor High School where he coached for 26 years, serving as assistant coach for six years and a head coach for another 20. Joe amassed 217 wins as a head coach and was recognized by the National Coaches Association for his 200th win in 1999. He returned to his alma mater, T.W. Harvey, and served as a volunteer assistant coach, allowing him to coach his son as a Red Raider. Joe then returned to his college alma mater and served as a volunteer assistant coach and interim head coach at Heidelberg. During his time at Heidelberg, the team hosted 10 OAC championship dual or tourney champs, 25 individual OAC champions, 40 national qualifiers, nine All-Americans, a national runner-up, and a national champion. Joe has also served as president of the Greater Cleveland Wrestling Coaches Official Association and has been recognized as a Coach of the Year by the same association and was also a Division I Coach of the Year in 1989. Joe is also a member of the T.W. Harvey and Mentor High School Athletic Hall of Fames and has served as a regional representative to the National Wrestling Coaches Association. And I think Coach Hodd is another prime example. Wherever he goes, he raises the level of competition in people. I would like to present for induction into the Ohio chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Joe Hada. Children told me I should start with a joke. I told them I didn't know any, and they refused to get up because they're too shy. Uh, they're only 12 and 10. Uh, it was probably a SpongeBob joke, uh, but um, my mom and dad would say, Joe, there's only one D in Hada, uh, but um, nice little Hungarian name. So, anyway, uh, I am so thank you uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I look out and I know so many of you. Uh, I, I know the people that have come before us and it, it's just, you know, these are people that, uh, you know, I have worshipped uh, my in, entire wrestling uh, life. I'd like to thank the selection committee for such a tremendous humbling honor. There's no doubt the class of 2022 all share a lifetime of commitment for the love of our sport, wrestling. I also want to thank all of you who came to show your support. I'm so honored to be with you here today. When I was in junior high, I asked a, I asked a friend of mine, hey, is that your brother running outside? And I thought he was nuts because it was pretty darn cold out there. And he said, yes, he's losing some weight for wrestling. And then, with a very strange smirk on his face, he goes, you know, Joe, uh, if you wrestle and you take somebody down, you get two points. That's twice what you had in basketball last year. <laughs> now, um, I did the math. Uh, I was in. And then the following year, during football practice, Paul Bogardis was my freshman football coach. And I think many of you would know Paul. Uh, he was also the wrestling coach, and he looked at me and he said, Hey, Hada, you're going to wrestle. And I said, Yes, sir. And with that, I started a great journey. I was blessed in many ways to be surrounded by people who are always supportive, encouraging, and honest. I'd like to thank my high school coaches, Paul Bogardis, Walt Blake, Dick Deppenbrock. These are just idols to me. Coach Deppenbrock and I would go to the state wrestling clinic together. And one year, about eight of us were talking in St. John's in one of those little aisles down there with Russ Hellickson, and we were talking about Lee Kemp. Coach Deppenbrock had coached Lee in high school. And when I made the comment that 
Coach Steffenbrock, you had coached me and Lee Kemp. Coach said, Joe, I coach you with a lot less results. <laughs> and I go, that's true. Uh, I thought Russ Hellickson would wet himself. I mean, we were all laughing. It was one of the funniest things I'd seen, but extremely true and honest. Uh, Pete Risen was my college coach at Heidelberg University College at the time, and his passion for wrestling was legendary and very contagious. When I started wrestling at Metter High School, I was fortunate to have Jim Schoenauer. Jim was not only the head coach, but my friend, my tutor, my mentor. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better person to be with. These are people who taught me so much about wrestling, about coaching, about life. I was truly blessed to have great assistant coaches, my co-coaches. These are people that were my wingmen. I mean, just great people. When I started my career coaching at Letonia High School, it was Ron Pagano. Ron called me, he was very upset. He has COVID, couldn't make it. Uh, you know, counting on scene. At Mentor High School, uh, it was Norm Hillstrom, Hector Gonzalez, Jeff Turingo, and the current coach, Ray Lamana, was on our staff at that time. I returned to my alma mater, Harvey High School, for my son's senior year. I was so fortunate to be with another group of great guys. John D'Angelo, Tom Amiot, and Jeremy Patton. But most especially, my son. I was surprised my son's senior year at Heidelberg when his coach, Jason Miller, said, hey, you want to help out? And I was really reluctant to go to college with my son. I saw Ronnie Dangerfield movie, I think you have too. And, uh, you know, but you know, our first trip was to South Beach. So, hey, I'm in, I'm going. So, my return to Heidelberg started 12 wonderful years. With four head coaches, coaches Miller, Shear, Schock, and Patrizzi, and numerous grad assistants. I did not, I did notice I was not only the world's oldest grad assistant, but I was old enough to be their father. Now, I'd also like to thank Heidelberg University, uh, my alma mater, that has done so much for me, and athletic director Jerry McDonald for helping make it all possible. And to my friend Chuck Angelo, thank you for your support. And to my college friends, Marty Hammer, Rocco Gianna, Gianni, Steve Devine, and Bob Youngblood, my teammate. I'd like to thank every wrestler on every team and all my teammates. There's a few here today. I don't really believe that you can love to coach without loving to teach. And you cannot teach or coach without loving to learn from others. I'd like to thank every friend, fan, and opponent. I learned from everyone. I started my wrestling journey with the support of my parents and my siblings. Any time I stepped into the ring and crossed that white line as a wrestler or coach, I know I had their support. I wish they could be here today. I'm so blessed to have I knew that was coming. Right time. Uh, uh, so blessed to have the love and support of my family. Uh, now these people have to stand because they've always stood for me. Uh, my daughter Julie and her friend Brad. My son Joe and our grandchildren Jackson and Lexi. Our daughter Betsy, who is one fantastic fast pitch coach. The best coach's wife in the world, and everyone here that's ever coached. 
knows how important that is. The love of my life, my wife, Mary. I'm here today because God put me on the most wonderful journey. I'm here today because I was blessed to have met the people I met along the way. You all share this. I thank all of you. I was told when I was growing up that I grew up during the golden age of rock and roll and wrestling. Yes, it was great. But the, I think the best is yet to come. I was told to pass the torch. I just wanted you to know I'm not passing that torch to anyone. I'm going to keep lighting other torches for wrestling for a long time. Thank you so much, and God bless you all. Our next inductee is John Jeff Fire. I think uh, Mr. Jeff Fire is another example of how deep this class is, how unique this class is of the class of 2022. Again, he's one of the, one of the inductees. Everywhere he went, he seems to raise the level of not only the wrestling in the area, but it seems like the people of the wrestling community. John Jeff Fire began his coaching career in Sweden, where he was a Greco-Roman champion and worked with youth youth wrestlers learning freestyle. Mr. Jeff Fire continues his coaching career in the United States, first moving to Chelmsford High School as assistant where he captured a Massachusetts State Championship and an outright New England Championship, the first in his school's history. John then moved on to Ohio where he began coaching at the University of Finley where he produced 43 All-Americans, five national champions, and six academic All-Americans in the span of just nine years. In 1995, the Finley team captured the NAIA National Championship and John was voted National Coach of the Year. He is the winningest coach in Finley history with 72 dual wins, but, which I think is probably the most important thing, his proudest accomplishment is that all of his four-year eligible wrestlers who used their four years of eligibility all received their college degrees. John then moved on to Eastern Michigan as assistant and an interim head coach where they produced an All-American and a first academic All-American in his school's history. John then returned to high school ranks, producing multiple district and regional champs and five state champions. John has also coached internationally and has been inducted to the Hancock County Athletic Hall of Fame and the University of Finley Hall of Fame. I would like to induct into the Ohio chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. John Jeff Fire. one inductee whose name spurs all those assembled to collectively turn to one another and ask who the hell is that guy um, and this year I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm that guy now there are two reasons uh, why I'm here and why I'm that guy number one uh, the major reason I'm here is that I bought Andy to Savito a bunch of expensive fishing gear um, those reels working out Andy yeah okay he hasn't caught a fish yet Got it. And my name probably isn't familiar because uh, that's the way I did my job. Uh, the focus was on my team and my wrestlers and not on me, and that's the way I preferred it. Now, I never had a coach in wrestling until my junior year of high school. 
and I, yeah, I was like state runner up in freestyle and Greco and, and, and placed out at uh, age group nationals, but uh, I was far from a prodigy. In fact, the immortal Brian Brakeman in the 1980 Brakeman Report referred to me as the nondescript Jeff Fire. Um, <laughs> Mr. Brakeman, I've waited over 40 years to look you in the eye. And say this, dude, you nailed it. <laughs> I can't even describe what I did out there, so Mr. Bregman, kudos. Um, coaching, no, though, that, that's my calling, and that was how I was able to give back. And if there's one thing I've noticed amongst all of the uh, inductees, they talk about giving back, and that's that's the hallmark of the, of the character of everybody that's here, and I congratulate everybody so far. You're just a, an outstanding group of people. Um, this is my time to say thank you. And uh, first, my high school coach was Corky Marcelli, uh, back here, his son, Vic. Give him a hand, this guy. His son, Victor, is now starting at uh, Virginia, and he's, th this is how close our relationship is. He's, he's godfather to my son, and there's a reason. That was, he was like a father to me, and he took me under his wing. I had no talent. I didn't have a clue. Um, by the time I was finished with him, I still didn't have any talent. I still didn't have a clue, but he made me into a better person, and that's something I really will always be appreciative for. Uh, we traveled overseas in 1980 to Sweden, and um, that was, I, like I said, why I got to do that, I, it's hard to explain, but it was a tremendous period in my life. Uh, I got to train with uh, Janik Holström, who was a Swedish Olympian, and Krista Persson, uh, and these guys ignited my love of Greco. And then I went to college, and I wrestled for John Clark, at St. Lawrence University in New York. You probably know his sons, Mitch and John. Uh, Coach Clark was a master psychologist, and I blew my knee out at the Cornell Open uh, my junior year, and it, it, my leg never recovered. I had three surgeries, and I wasn't any good before the surgery. I was even worse after it. And um, he allowed me to be the student assistant, and for me, I, I kind of felt like, um, I was uh, a glorified water boy, but he let me corner some wrestlers at some of the tournaments we went to, and I, I figured it out pretty quick. It felt a lot more gratifying to coach somebody than, than to be the guy in the circle. And these guys taught me, you know, they, hard work. We all know hard work, but they also taught me humor and humility and um, uh, uh, an increasingly rare concept of sportsmanship. And I owe these guys a debt that I can never repay. And that led me, uh, led me to my first head coaching job at the University of Finley. And I took over a program that had uh, only six guys on the entire program. They, um, I like to say they were so bad that I could beat all of them. And, and that's not a good thing. Um, they scored uh, zero team points at nationals. And I was told straight up, either, either you create a program here or we're going to drop the program. And Beyond being completely unqualified uh, to be a college head, uh, head coach, I was also naive and clueless, and I thought that offer sounded like the greatest thing I'd ever heard. And they were so naive and clueless that they gave me a year to try to turn things around. I, I think that what they wanted was that we would fail and that they could turn the money over to the football and basketball programs. Um, but we failed upwards. And, and we ended up having a really solid program. And the first person I need to thank there is Kurt Leonard, uh, who was my assistant. And we would bring in kids who were rough next. And I, I should probably explain that. Uh, we couldn't compete with the Division I programs in Ohio for recruiting. It just wasn't going to happen. And the, the, the greatest of the next level kids, they went to, um, you know, they went to the great uh, Division II and III programs, Ashland and John Carroll, Mount Union and the like. Um, and we had to kind of uh, scour the bottom uh, for some kids. 
And we brought in guys that we felt their wrestling, uh, best wrestling was still ahead of them. And maybe they didn't have any coaching in high school. Maybe they didn't have any good sparring partners. Uh, they were hard-nosed kids, but maybe they had a killer district or uh, they got injured at the end. And we felt that if they could stick it out, they, they could be great wrestlers. And it, and it, and it worked for us. Um, Joe Drago mentioned they competed big, and I think that we followed that same philosophy. And, and just as an NAI school of uh, 2,000 students, uh, we wrestled everybody. We wrestled Ohio State. We dueled against Nebraska. We wrestled uh, Michigan State, Minnesota. Uh, we beat Northern Illinois. We beat Eastern Michigan. We beat Illinois State, uh, Kent State, the year that they were MAC runners up to Central Michigan. We beat them head to head in a duel. And that only happened not because of me, but because of the young men that gave me a chance and, and bought into the program. And um, as you mentioned earlier, probably my greatest uh, feat that I'm uh, uh, very proud of is that every kid that used four years of eligibility under me uh, left with a college degree. Now along the way we added Miran Karshalava, uh, who's here with his wife Gina. And people ask me if I coach Miran, and I, I say if, uh, you know, sitting in a corner holding a bottle of water was coaching, then yeah, sure, I coached him. Um, Bill, the throwing dummy, uh, basically could have done the same job I did. Um, this guy decided to stay in the U.S. when his Russian team that we hosted uh, returned to the Soviet Union, and he became an undefeated national champion for us, and is now... Uh, to me, he's the embodiment of the American dream. He's running one of the most acclaimed wrestling academies in the entire country. And I say only in America, but I also say only at Finley, too. There were a number of schools that, when, when he came here, I was calling everybody, like, please take this guy off my hands. I, I have no idea what to do with him. He's way better than anybody here, and they were all kind of like, you know, get lost, Finley guy, don't bother us, and then, Shortly, he started kicking all those guys' asses, and <laughs> they were, about that Karshalava guy, um, I said, what was Dr. Robles saying? The young son said, F you to his dad. Well, that was kind of my response to those coaches. Um, I have to recognize Matt Hammonds, and I wouldn't be here right now if Matt Hammonds hadn't taken up the cause, and he started this nomination process. Now, Matt wrestled at Hilliard under, uh, legendary coach Ken Ash, and he was on a stacked Hilliard team that had, uh, I mean, they just had immense uh, talent on that team. Now, Matt was um, an eight foot tall, 112 pounder, um, basically every college coach's recruiting dream. Um, please laugh at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and we recruited all the studs on the Hilliard team and Matt too, and uh, one by one all the studs, they, uh, they blew us off, but this crazy Hammonds kid, he decided to come to Finley. And I have to say, uh, he, he had no talent, but he was probably the most tenacious human being I, I've ever met. This guy just did not know when to have the decency to quit and give up, and he just always kept coming. And uh, he only went to Nationals because the guy ahead of him broke his hand. And in typical roughneck fashion, he, he turned that around. He won the first of his two All-American Awards. And Matt, I, I want to, right now at this time, I want to, I, I owe you an apology. And that is, the first time you made 118, I said that you looked like an anemic, anorexic, albino tapeworm. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that, man. I, I'm feeling really bad inside, so. Uh, and I'd be remiss if I don't think uh, so many, this, this is not about me, and I, I really want to make that clear. And I want to also say that there are a number of people that I mentioned tonight, they deserve to be in here way before me. And, and hopefully uh, getting a, an untalented person like me in here will open the door for them. Uh, Kurt Leonard, you know, I chose assistants who would not agree with me and I was grateful uh, for Kurt because um, he balanced me out, he disagreed and he ended up being right 
like 99% of the time. I, I think I, I think I picked the right restaurant one time on a road trip, and that was probably it. Otherwise, Kurt, uh, just an unbelievable human being. Uh, Alberto Rodriguez, he was a Cuban Olympian and World Games bronze medalist. He beat Kenny Monday. He beat Dave Schultz. And if anybody can figure out how he was my assistant, um, talk to me later. But I, I learned a tremendous amount from this guy. He was just sensational, as was Miran. And I think that uh, I think it was Coach Hada that said that you always keep learning. If you don't keep learning in this game, you know you're you're not long for it. You got to keep adapting. Um, Sean Nelson, who's back there, uh, was my grad assistant, uh, Ohio legend, Penn State All-American, and he taught me a tremendous amount, and I, I was really blessed uh, to, to have you there with me, and he's now leading the Roughneck program at Finley, and um, I, I guess I'm just happy I held down the job till they could get a real coach there, and I'm grateful to Sean. Um, Mike Confletti, right now, um, was an All-American for me at Finley. He's allowing me to uh, finish out my days with the Detroit Roughneck Wrestling Club. And I'm, I'm still able to, uh, there's a little bit of tread left on the tire, and I'm, I'm uh, helping out a little bit, and I'm, I'm very, very appreciative. And I, I've got my, uh, my brother here and his wife, and uh, so many of you have mentioned family. I don't know of anybody that doesn't get where they're at because of their family. My mother and father have passed on uh, a long time ago. My father, I think, is somewhere up there right now saying, would you wrap this damn thing up? You, you, you've just kept blabbing on too long. That was the kind of man my father was. Uh, but I want to thank my wife, Connie. She was not able to make it here. Uh, this is a room full of tough people, but there's nobody in my book tougher than my wife. Uh, she survived five brain surgeries, uh, she's been on hospice and fought her way off, and she's my Hall of Fame hero. And uh, whenever I want to complain about something or I think something's going wrong, uh, I got to check myself because uh, God hasn't thrown half of what he's thrown at her towards me, and uh, she finds a way to push through every single day, and it's, it's very humbling. Uh, I'll conclude by saying my job was not merely to coach, but to build young people's futures and to not bring attention to myself, but to prepare a path to success for them. Uh, my effort meant absolutely zero without the achievement of the people whose lives I tried to shape for the better. And for all those here tonight, the other esteemed honorees, um, even Brian Brakeman, um, uh, all the young people who blessed me with the opportunity to coach them, all the coaches who molded me and put up with me and showed unbelievable patience with a, a talent-deprived dreamer, and all those that I coached who made me better and allowed me to chase my dreams. Uh, I want to share this award with all of you. Uh, I dedicate it to you, and from the bottom of my heart, uh, I, I thank all of you. Thank you. Obviously, Mr. Jeffrey was a good coach, but he might be a better comedian. <laughs> I was waiting for him to say something different to Mr. Brakeman. I don't know about you guys. I was, I was waiting he was going to handle that in a totally different scenario. But Our next inductee is Deborah Kali, and I can tell you this, I think we might have possibly saved the best for last. I can tell you she's very decorated looking into everything she's done, and I think it was my coach, Tom Evans. I don't know if she knew what she was getting involved with when she probably married her husband, Chris, because it seems like wrestling has taken over both of their lives. And um, I like to tell people this, if you're blessed enough to have your mother around, I always say that the toughest wrestlers usually have the toughest moms. And anybody knew the K-Line boys, they were definitely tough wrestlers. I don't know if it came from Chris as much as it probably came from <laughs> Mrs. K-Line, but <laughs> Mrs. K-Line has been Involved in Ohio wrestling for over 35 years, she began her wrestling journey at the Little Sibs program at Wadsworth 
and then follow that up for additional time at Uniontown Lake. From those two stops, Deborah became a pair for USA Wrestling, and that's where her career seemed to take off, and has over two decades of experience, including the re reaching, doing some of the reaches, the highest level a pair can reach, I think it's a P1E, which is the highest ranking possible, which has allowed her to work on anything from regional, national, and world level tournaments, and doing some of the research, I think she is, I know her and Chris have both been president award winners through USA Wrestling, the first husband and wife, but I think she's done it twice. For 18 years, Deborah has been the Tournament of Champions pairing official and has also served as a USA Ohio pairing co-director. Deborah has assisted over the years in running multiple tournaments, including the Grizzly Invitational, which she and her, her husband, Chris, so I don't know if any of you know, he's also a Ohio chapter National Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, and I think, to set another record, I think they are the only husband and wife to go in for the Ohio chapter National Wrestling Hall of Fame. They, is, they have parlayed their love of wrestling into a family business, and that business is Wrestle One Tournaments. The company operates throughout the country and has run the OHSA state tournament for the past two years and has become the first outside organization given such a privilege. Among some of her accolades, in 2008, Deborah was named the Volunteer Pair of the Year and in 2017, National Pair of the Year. In 2021, she was awarded from the United States Wrestling Officials Association. They recognized her with a Lifetime Award for Excellence. I think what is amazing at this point, I think everything she touches, she dedicates her life to. Most importantly, her family. And I think anybody who's become to know the KLI family is synonymous with integrity and hard work and doing what is necessary to grow the sport of wrestling. I would love to present for induction into the Ohio chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Deborah Kaylin. National Hall of Fame and the chapter of Ohio and Ray Anthony for nominating me for this prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award. Such an honor. so many amazing people along the way who have helped me to get where I am today. I've learned how to work together with everyone, building a team and enjoying and making memories along the way. Wrestling makes lasting friendships without, throughout your life. If it be in your state, at a regional, or national level tournament or across the United States or other countries. At the end of a tournament, if it be youth, junior high, high school, Ohio school state tournament, freestyle Greco qualifier and state tournament, regional or nationals, always giving the wrestlers the best friend tournaments possible. There are so many people who helped me along the way from my husband, Chris, who wrestled for Coventry High School and was a state placer, fifth. Our sons, Christopher, <clears throat> state champ 2001. Our son, Matthew, state champ 2002 and four-time state placer. Joshua, 2005 state placer, third. Wadsworth Little Sis, coaches and wrestlers. Lake Matt Stats, coaches and wrestlers, Ohio, youth wrestling program and the Deese family, 
USA Ohio Wrestling Organization and its officials, Pairing and Matt, from around Ohio. Tournament directors from Ohio High School and USA Ohio Freestyle and Greco, and USA Wrestling staff and the USWOA Pairing and Matt officials from across the United States and Wrestle One tournaments and the staff and its family our daughter-in-laws and our amazing grandkids. I've been truly blessed so much. Wrestling builds character and also builds family friendship. I have always, I have all, all of you as a part of it, and I thank you. I would like to take time to thank several people who came to share in, and support me on this memorable occasion. My husband, Chris, and our three sons, and their families, Christopher Jr., Monica, Christopher, K Christopher and Caden, Matthew, Jesse, Mila, Xander, Connor, and Luca, Joshua, Jenna, Victoria, and Madison, Larry and Olen, my brother and, brother and sister-in-law, Art and Danae, our nephew and niece, Tony and Betsy Moeller, and this is a son from another mother, <laughs> um, Jesse Lang, Rudis, and wrestling for... Um, Medina Highland, Sam Rico and Lorraine Brandenburg, part of Russell One family, Tila and Jim Harding from USA, Kentucky, pairing and Matt official, and she's also part of Russell One family, Randy and Terry Glover, wrestling from Coventry and Matt Stadt, Coach Urbis from St. Ed's, Coach Jeff and Dana Coleman, USA Ohio Freestyle Director. Leo and Carol, a part of the beginning of my journey in running tournaments. I pulled her from the stands at Wadsworth and I said, you need to help me. <laughs> and that's how it began. And um, Jamie Perry, daughter from another mother, and her mom, Jamie, or Kim Grindle. Everyone here, I thank you so much for supporting me and being a part of this memorable occasion and my brother my two brother-in-laws who are in heaven mike kaylai and charlie kaylai they were part of this as well and um the ones who couldn't make it today and the text messages and the calls and the facebook posts i'm truly very blessed thank you Everybody's here. We'd like to keep trying to grow this. I think the most consistent message is being selfless, doing for others, and growing the sport of wrestling. But uh, one little side note, I think sometimes you add up all the years, the, be the best thing you can do is be in service to others. And it's over 300 years of service to the sport of wrestling from this year's induction class. So thanks for everybody coming, drive safe, and we'll see you next year.